Hey everyone, it's Kathleen from Kathleen Marie Design and Online Art Lessons with Kathleen. In this lesson today, we will be learning about how to make painted paper. Painted paper is exactly like it sounds. It's paper that I have added some designs with paint. And what this is used for can be used on its own just as um, art in and of itself. Or it's good to use this now for different types of art like collages. It adds some more interest to your collaging. So we are going to start with a piece of paper today. This was a larger, <clears throat> a larger size and I did cut it in half. It is a thicker quality paper. It's not watercolor paper, but it does have um, a, a thicker quality than your typical computer paper. If computer paper is all you have, that will still work, but it will curl as it dries. Once it's dry, you could always iron it flat or press it flat by just placing it under some heavy books. But if possible, I would recommend going with a paper that's a little bit thicker to begin with. So what we're going to do today, in my example, I have created a painted paper design in the cool colors, which is blue, purple, and green. I'm going to create another example today in the warm colors, but you can create any colors uh, combination that you like. I'm using watercolors for my painted paper. You can also use typical tempera or acrylic. Acrylic is going to be a little messier and staining. What's nice about watercolor is you have all these color options and you don't have to mix. It's a little bit neater and better for younger students. So ideally for the background, we are going to cover it in one solid color. And if you can, try to find a brush that's a little bit larger. Otherwise it's gonna take some time. So I have this uh, larger squared off brush and like I said I'm going to do the warm colors today and so to make sure everything stands out nicely I'm going to start with yellow which is the lightest of the warm colors and that way my yellows, uh, my oranges and reds are really going to stand out on this solid yellow background. To make watercolor work, you need to always be continually dipping into your water glass or bucket to reactivate that paint. You can tell when you need more water when your brush feels dry, you start to get a more of a scratchy texture on your paper. So as you can see, I'm basically dipping in the water every time before I go back into the yellow to make sure that it is wet enough. So I'm going to fill up this entire page with my yellow. You can choose any color you like, but I do recommend trying to start with a lighter background color. If you are working on a surface that's going, um, that could be stained, you can always put down some newspaper or a placemat. Since I'm working on this island, I can just wipe up any paint that does get onto that surface afterward. If you are not using watercolor, if you're using something like a tempera or acrylic, I would recommend wearing an apron or even with the watercolor. It never hurts just to protect your clothing. All right, <clears throat> so I finished my background with yellow. And once you're done, it's always nice. Actually, let me just get this one little spot down here. Okay. The next thing we want to do is add our patterns and designs. It's really up to you. There's no right or wrong way to do this. I like to think of different lines um, and shapes you can do. And by repeating them, it will turn into a pattern. So I am switching to a smaller pointier brush. And like I mentioned in this, I'm doing a warm color example. So the three warm colors are red, yellow, and orange. So in my example, I have a zigzag line. This one, I'm gonna do a loop-de-loop -loop line. So it just goes round and round and round. I'll do three of those. 
Now, as you can see, it starts to get lighter at the end. I'm running out of paint, so you can dip again. Don't need as much water this time as we did for the background. All right. Every time we change colors, I need to wash my brush. What I say for young artists is to jump on the bottom 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I like to check in on the paper towel. For young artists, this is a good visual reminder. If there's any color on here, that means your brush is dirty and they need to do it again. But since it's clean, I can re-dip into the water. And now I'll go into another warm color, which is orange. So we have our loop-de-loop -loop lines. How can I make it more interesting? I could add some lines, just kind of dashes in between. So I'm always looking and thinking about ways, how can I make my pattern more interesting? And the answer is to always add more details. New color, jump on the bottom. Check it, it's clean. Magenta is also a warm color-ish. I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna do, looks pretty similar to their red, but that's okay some squiggly lines. Okay, I'm gonna switch to see a different orange. Get some more lightness. Do some dash lines this way. Some peach. Peach is a warm color. It's a variation of orange. What can I add? I could color in this section of the loops. Kind of like a teardrop shape. I'm not doing it super precise. You know, if I really want to take my time and get that shape perfectly, I could. But this is a little bit more abstract. You don't need to worry about making it perfect. Okay, let's see if there's anything else. I do have one more yellow color in my palette. Not sure if it will show up with the yellow background. Kind of. Just add a little bit more yellow to it. This is kind of more random. It's not, not really following a pattern. I'm just adding little more yellow touches here and there. All right, so. I have one cool piece of painted paper, one warm piece of painted paper, and if I was going to make something abstract, some type of collage, I could then cut this out, glue it on, it's going to create a much more interesting paper to work with than just something solid. So I will show you one more example, let's see, put this over here. <clears throat> We could just do something that's not following any type of category, but maybe just more open-ended. Let's start with this nice turquoise color. The darker colors do show the brush strokes a little bit more. But like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect, so it's okay if you can kind of see these different strokes. Keep dipping in my water to make it nice and wet. That's going to go a little bit faster. Of course, the more water you add, the lighter your color will get. So that is just something to keep in mind. All right, can you kind of do it this way? All right, so I've roughly filled in the background with this turquoise color. And now I can put any color I like on top. <clears throat> I go back to my skinnier brush. And I'm going to add the 
this magenta is gonna look cool. Maybe instead of starting with lines, I could just start with shape. So I could start with some circles. And I could switch colors right away and do something different. I don't have to make it a repeating pattern. I could change every time. Shapes are good. Now, if I were to cut out this paper and use it for a collage, it will look different than the other two since it's not a repeating pattern where you cut out depending on where you cut, it's gonna look a little different, but that's okay. Like I said, there's really no right or wrong way to do this. Let's see, I'll add some orange. Some rectangles. Fill it in. Alright. So that's something that's a little bit different. It's not really following any rules. It's using any color you want. As you can see, the background was still a little bit wet and the shapes were wet, so it is doing some bleeding and blending together, which is totally fine. This lesson is great for students who are learning about watercolors. They want to explore how they work and it's nice and open-ended, it's abstract, and you're able to create really beautiful paintings that you can then use in other art making. I hope you enjoyed this. I would love to see your finished product. You can tag me at online art with Kathleen. See you next time.